Uh, you've been listening to us for quite some time from what I've just heard, right? But now it's time to make that commitment, you understand? It's time to commit, all right? So we're here, are you I see we're here, we're, we're worldwide, worldwide, brother. But um, officer, get me, um, yeah, you can put that for me. Stop. Yeah, that's good. Call it. All right, listen to this. The book of Sirach, chapter 42, verse 7. Bring it out! Deliver all things in number and weight. Right! And put all in writing. Read that again. Deliver all things in number and weight. Come on. And put all things, put all in writing. Put all things in writing. Read. That thou give us out or receive us in. All right, so you've got to have papers, right? If you if you have a car, right, and um, the police pull you over, what's, what, what sort of things would they ask you to prove that the car belongs to you? Will they, will they take your word for it or this is mine? If they say to you, this is your car, and you say yes, do you think that will be that will suffice and they will just drive off and leave you alone? What do you reckon? They're gonna ask you for some stuff, right? They don't want some proof, right? License, insurance, MOT. Yeah, you, you need proof. Listen, um, the way you see the nations move and operate, they got that from us. They got the order and the structure from the Bible. Right? Our people and our God is a God of order and a God of structure, you understand? So everything that you do, you've got to have proof, you understand? You have to have proof. So I like the fact that you said she's your wife, that's lip service, but no, you need to put, um, you, may, you have to prove it, bro. You know, like me said one day, you have to get those papers, right? Okay, is that something that you guys have spoke about? You spoke about that? Yeah? All right, all right. Well, you know what? Listen, listen. You got our number. We can talk. We can talk. But, um, officer, give me uh, First Corinthians eleven. Yeah. The book of First Corinthians, chapter eleven, verse three. Watch this. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So, uh, read it again, officer. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So, brother, who is the head of the man? All right. Read on. At the head. Of the woman is the man. Sis, who is the head of the woman? Read on. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is who? The head of Christ is God, right? Read off, sir. Verse 4. Every man praying. Every man praying. Or prophesying. Prophesying, bring out the word of God. Having his head covered. Having his head covered. Dishonoreth his head. Dishonoreth his head. What do you think that means, bro? Read that again, officer. Verse 4. Every man praying. Listen, listen good. Every man praying. Or prophesying. Prophesying, which means bringing out the scriptures, reading the word, or when you're hearing the word of God, read. Having his head covered. Having his head covered. Dishonoreth his head. So who's the head of the man? Who was the head of the man? Christ, right? So when the scriptures are coming out, any man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, whilst the scriptures are coming out, you dishonor your head and your head is Christ. So what do you think you should do, bro, when you hear the scripts coming out? What do you think the right thing to do? Look, look at us men here. Yeah, bro. Read it again, officer. It's not, I'm not, it's not me telling you. It's what the scriptures say. Read it again from the top. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Come on. Well, I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the head of the man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. Head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is God. So there's an order, right? There's an order. Christ, uh, God, Christ, man, woman, children, right? Read on. Verse 4. Oh, 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 yeah, what did you say? What did you say? Yeah, we're prophesying, but we're but they're, but they're coming out. The scriptures are coming out. So you as a man should have your head uncovered according to the scriptures, right? You say you're an Israelite, right? You say you're an Israelite, bro. All right. We don't have to say, oh, praise man. Give him a round of applause, man. Hey, that's not hard to do, right? That's simple, man. Show off the woolly hair, bro, yeah? Show off the woolly hair. All right, read that again, officer, from the top. Verse 3. But I'll have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the head of the man is Christ, read. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. So sis, the head of the woman is the man, read. And the head of Christ is God. The head of Christ is God, so that's the order, read on. Verse four, what's this? Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So 
you removed your head uh, garment, brother, so all praises to the Lord. But it, it doesn't finish there. Read on. Verse 5. Listen. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied, prophesied with her head cover uncovered, dishonoreth her head. No, no, no. She's good. She's good. She's good. Read up her again. Listen. Verse 5. Verse 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied, every woman that prayeth or prophesied, even with, when you hear the word of God, read. With her head uncovered, with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. So, what do you think he should do, sis? He was he was going to do it for you, just. <laughs> hey, brother, he was going to do it for a just, right? So, put it back. Go on, make that gesture again. Make that gesture again. Listen, um, you guys say you're Israelites, right? So, there's a lot of stuff you may have heard, there's a lot of stuff you might not have known, but there's no such thing as coincidence, right? You were always meant to stand here today. You're always meant to hear near this word, right? Read that again, officer. Verse 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. And who's the head of the woman, sis? All right, so you dishonor your head. So all praise to the Lord. Give me a round of applause. All right, very simple. It's not hard to do, right? It's not hard to do. Now, um, something was brought out earlier on, brother, about, um, you know, appearances. How your appearance can be misjudged or misconstrued or someone can judge you just by the way that you look. You know what I mean? So... Those, uh, I don't know, what, what do you call them? Those coverings? Ballies, ballies. Ballies, right? Those kind of ballies or balaclava, right? They give off a, they give off a kind of a statement. Whenever you see someone wearing something like that, the, the first thing that comes to your mind is something negative. It's something negative, you know what I mean? So, it's all about being, um, showing the right image, showing the right um, decor, and um, being that right, uh, that beacon of light to your people. That's what the Lord wants, you know what I mean? That's what the Lord wants. Can you say you love the Lord, right? You love God, you love God, sis? So how do you prove? How do you prove to the Heavenly Father that you love Him? Close, close. Read that for him, officer. 1 John, 1 John chapter 5, yeah, five verse two. and 3. You're close, bro, you're close. Alright, so we're out here teaching who we are according to the Bible, that we are the 12 tribes of Israel, repenting, coming back and keeping God's laws, God's commandments. Read up what you got, you got up, sir. The book of 1 John chapter 5 verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. So the keeping of God's commandments are not grievous, right? But the Christian church will tell us that we don't have to keep God's commandments no more. Yeah, they say it's too hard to do, but uh, it's not hard. Um, give me um, Matthew 5, 17, officer. It's not hard to do. Like, we read uh, the order in 1 Corinthians, right? It was very easy for you to take off your head covering. And sis, it was very easy for you to cover your hair, right? Was that difficult? It's not difficult, all right? And I'm sure, sis, that it would be very easy for you to, to wear a dress and to wear a skirt and to don't wear that which pertains to a man. Is that difficult to do, really? It's not hard. Read it, officer. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Yeah. Think not that I've come to destroy the law. So Christ said, don't think that I've come to destroy the law. Read. Or the prophets. Or what the prophets taught, commanding God's commandments. Read. I have not come to destroy. I have not come to destroy God's laws. But to fulfill. But to fulfill. What did Christ fulfill? What did, what, what did Christ fulfill? Yeah, it's a question to you, bro. What did Christ fulfill? Yeah, he fulfilled the commandments, but he came here to do what? what? What was the purpose of the Lord sending the Messiah here? What was he meant to do? To do what? What was he meant to do? What was the, what was the purpose of Christ coming initially? To save our people, to save our people right? All right, go back to um, Matthew 5, 17, officer. Go on, he came to die. Christ came to die for our sins. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was the ultimate sacrifice. You know, when we sinned under, under the law of Moses, we um, sacrificed animals, right? For forgiveness of sins. But it didn't really make any difference because there were some um, sins under the law of Moses that you couldn't get forgiveness for. You understand? Like if you murdered someone, it was death. If you committed adultery, it was death. You understand? But when Christ died for us, it meant that we could get forgiveness of all sins. 
Read that again, officer, uh, Matthew 5, 17. The book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Come on. Think that thou art come to destroy the law. I haven't come to destroy the law. Or the prophets. Or what the prophets talk concerning God's commandments. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. But to fulfill, because he had a purpose and a duty. Read. Verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. So till heaven and earth pass. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. So the heavens are still here, the earth is still here. Not one jot or one tittle shall pass from the law. Read. Till all be fulfilled. Till all be fulfilled. As all built as all been fulfilled yet, according to the Bible. Like as Christ made his second coming, as he destroyed the nations, as the children of Israel back in rulership. No, so that means that God's commandments are in still, they're still in full effect. It's only the sacrificial law that we don't have to keep anymore. Because Christ is that ultimate sacrifice. He died for our sins um, so that our people could gain forgiveness. Um, give me uh, Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1 verse 68. I think that's where you were going earlier on, right? Because the misconception of the world is that Christ came and died for all nations. But it just shows, brother, that people don't read the Bible. And that the pastors uh, teaching a church in church aren't teaching us the truth. You understand? Read that for me, officer. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Watch this. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Lord God of who? Of Israel. Of who? Of Israel. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Read. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. Visited and redeemed. Visited and saved his people. His being a possessive pronoun. Not all people. His people. Read. And have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. That horn of salvation is Christ. Because Christ is from the lineage of, lineage of King, uh, King David from the house of Judah, right? Read on. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. Mentioned through the scriptures, read. Which have been since the world began. Come on. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from our enemies. And from the hand of all that hate us. Because believe it or not, the world doesn't love us. The world does not love us. The world doesn't love us. We're still in our captivity. We're still Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Is you. And finally, my brother, be strong enough.